Now what we are going to do is we are actually going to do the hard work and do the math. So this is, in, if you want to follow along in the worksheet, this is in uh, sort of the next section starting on page three. But let me um, give you this description. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to analyze this setup so completely that we can describe the position of the mass as a function of time. This is, once again, at a level of detail that we haven't done before. Before we did it as far as, you know, figuring out what is the amount of force when I release it here. Um, so we've done that. We have looked at snapshots, you know. What is the position and velocity here? What is the position and velocity here? And we kind of didn't really do it, but you could have figured out position and velocity at any of these points. Like if it's at this point, then you would figure out what is the potential energy, and you would use that to figure out kinetic energy and find the velocity. But one thing that we have never done is we have never described it as a function of time. Yeah? So let's just see how we can do it. So um, let me title this um, analyzing, and I'm just going to give this a name. This particular type of motion that you see, it has a name. It's a very specific type of thing that you will see a lot over the course of your science and engineering courses. We call it simple harmonic oscillator motion. So analyzing a simple harmonic oscillator. Yeah. So uh, let's just start out with this picture. Let's say I have some mass M that's uh, hanging from a spring. Um, I have to start specifying some of the parameters here. Let's say that the spring constant is K. Mm, and I guess I can say that this is my equilibrium position. So this is x equals 0. All right. And this is a question that I can pose and answer. Let's say I pull this down a little bit. So I pull this mass down to down over here. And um, so you know this spring sort of comes. And now mass is down here. I pulled it down to some initial position, x is equal to x naught. And then I let go. And the question that we are now going to try to answer is what is the position as a function of time? Any ideas how you would begin to approach this kind of question? Doesn't quite fit into any of the boxes that we have talked about. It's because, you know, uh, if you use conservation of energy, that will not give anything as a function of time, right? Um, but you know, we have to start somewhere. Um, this is a type of problem you haven't seen before. So you know, more detailed and complicated than anything you have seen before. We are saying we have to start off from somewhere to try to figure this out. Where would you start? The starting point is actually not all that new. Would it surprise you if I said that in trying to answer this question, we actually start from standard strategy? Like, does that sound like a method that would work? Maybe. It's not completely irrelevant, right? Because one of the results that you know you can get from standard strategy is you can get acceleration. Right? And you know that acceleration is related to position. You know, acceleration is rate of change of velocity, which is itself rate of change of position. So acceleration is the double time derivative of position. Like, it's not as though it's an unrelated. 
Um, so far, we have tried to avoid doing this because then you know it gets complicated. Um, but now this is a new situation. There's no other way to really handle it. So we are going to start out with the standard strategy. And what I want to really impress you on is any kind of problem you see in mechanics, uh, the analysis of force is something that actually it always works. It's just that sometimes you have to use some brute force because the expression you get is not simple. You might have to do numerical calculation with a computer. Uh, this happens to be a situation where we can actually solve it exactly. But um, so you know, if you see a new problem and you don't know how to approach it, you can always start by analyzing the forces. That's why we start this class. That's why we start your sequence of physics classes with the forces, because that's your fallback method for everything. So let's just start from this. So if you're doing standard strategy, then we have to start out with a free body diagram. So we have a free body diagram. Um, let me cheat a little bit here. Um, I'm going to switch back to describing the forces on this mass as this quote unquote spring force. As in, I'm going to describe one force that is the combination of gravity and spring force and I'm going to call that my spring force. You're used to me doing this, right? Yes? So right now, at this position, what would you say is the spring force? That's the pure spring force, not the one with the quotation mark around it. What would you say the spring force here is? So mg plus kx with the directions in mind, what should that be? Aratan, I thought you said an answer. Yeah, zero. It's at equilibrium. Um, so th this is what we are treating as the equilibrium position of the quote unquote spring. At the equilibrium position of the spring, the fo sp <laughs> spring force is zero. So yeah, spring force is zero here. So imagine now uh, this is a situation where we pulled it down. What's the direction of spring force? Upward. And so let me draw that. Um, so here's the mass. So I have a spring force um, upward. And what would you say is the magnitude of the spring force in terms of, um, in terms of all the parameters that's written on the board? What is the magnitude of this? Oops, well, I have two black pens. What is the magnitude of this uh, quote unquote spring force? Magnitude is k, this k, times yeah, x naught, this position, displacement from equilibrium. So the magnitude would be k times x naught. Okay. Uh, all right, let me introduce one more sort of notational convention thing. And we will finish this portion. And I guess we have to take a break. And then we'll finish this up this description in a bit. Um, From the way you've seen me do things so far, um, which direction would you say I'm, um, which direction is positive? Am I, so, you know, if uh, you've seen this written down so far, and I asked you, what is the positive direction? Would you say that upward is positive or downward is positive? So a lot of people do intuitively choose upward is positive. Um, since I don't want to go against your intuition, so let me correct a couple of things. X naught, it's kind of a, um, natural to pick it as a positive number. That means for my X, I really should have called it minus X naught because I pulled it downward, right? So, um, there's a minus sign there. And for this force, um, so right now when the mass is down here, the force is pointing upward. Now, when I let go, I want you to imagine just any general position in this neighborhood. Um, is the force always going to be pointing upward? It's not, right? Sometimes it's going to point downward. So I want to write down this expression so that I'm not talking about just the magnitude. I'm actually talking about the force as a vector quantity with the direction in mind. So I want to have a description for the force with where the sign plus or minus signs are important. 
um, as a general function of x. Is this okay or do I need to change something? As in, for this position, if I said the force as a vector is k times x, so k, presumably a positive quantity, times x, um, is k times x right now describing an upward force or downward force? Describing downward force, right? Because x is a negative number. I don't want that. For this position, I want my force to be positive, upward. So what can I fix to make my force upward? Sorry, I heard someone mumble something there and here, but I didn't hear any of that. Arjun, were you saying something? Yeah, like make the x negative. Make the x negative? OK, I can do that. So you mean something like k times minus x? Yeah, actually, that's a, uh, I think that's actually conceptually cleaner. So you have actually seen it in this format. You have seen this as minus kx. And I don't know if I, I don't think I mentioned this name before. This particular form of force, it's called restoring force. If you are reading the textbook, you should have seen this phrase at some point. And the reason that this is called a restoring force is for the reason that Arjun was describing. The direction of force is negative, the opposite to the displacement. Okay. So, um, so I could just, you know, force is equal to minus k times x as a vector where I care about the direction. Okay. And let's just make sure that that makes sense when it's on the other side of the equilibrium. So when it's uh, above the equilibrium, is that my x positive or negative? Positive. Is my force negative then? Yeah, downward, right? All right, so all of that sounds fine. So, all right, so any other forces on this mass? Just this quote unquote spring force. That's actually a combination of spring plus gravity, right? That's the only force on this mass. Okay, then I think I'm um, done with all the standard strategy steps and I'm ready to write down my Newton's second law equation. So Newton's second law says, that net force, in this case, it's just a spring force. Once again, quote unquote spring force. So my spring force is equal to mass times acceleration. Yeah. Now, so from this, I can write this down, that my spring force, or minus kx, is equal to mass times acceleration. And you know, this is nothing that you haven't seen before. And what I'm now going to do is something that you have not seen before. I'm not going to stop here just to satisfy with, no, with knowing acceleration, because that's not my goal this time. My goal this time is to get the position as a function of time. So I can't stop here. I have to try to somehow express this uh, equation in terms of nothing but x. So you know you stare it for a while, and you realize, well, there's no algebraic way to do it. So the only way you can do it is through calculus. You write down what acceleration is in terms of position. So you do, do that one more step and say it's uh, mass times double time derivative of position. So I don't, uh, sometimes I'm a little bit sloppy about when I indicate this or not. So once I start doing this, what you have to implicitly remind yourself every single time is that position is a function of time. That's the only way this derivative makes sense. That what that means is that this position that I've written here, it's a function of time. It's not a simple number, it's an entire function. OK, uh, let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, uh, let me solve. This is the most complicated looking thing in the entire equation. So let me solve for this. So solving for that, I get this. Double time derivative of position is equal to, let's see, move the mass over. So it's a minus k over m times x. 
And once again, as one last reminder, at some point I am going to get lazy and not remind to you uh, at some point. X is a function of time, um, both here and here. So this is, um, um, this is what we call differential equation. How many here have seen a differential equation in your math class? You should have seen it if you haven't solved one. Um, so um, we call it differential equation because it's an equation that involves derivatives. Um, here's, here's my, oops, um, forgot to here. Um, here's my derivative. It's not any derivative, it's a second order derivative. Um, so it's a differential equation involving uh, second order derivative of time. And in the context of physics, this equation actually has a name. We call this equation of motion. The idea here is that this equation, once written down, completely determines how something moves. So this is the equation of motion. Once you have an equation of motion for something, then it's, uh, you can determine what it's going to do for, so if you know the equation of motion, and if you know where it was at a particular time, then for all future times, you can determine what it's going to do. I mean, if you are into philosophy, there's some philosophical implication to that, but I won't get into that. This is lower division physics. So uh, this is the equation of motion, and the reason we are introducing this only now is, um, well, this is kind of difficult to solve for. It's not something you can solve for algebraically, but we'll try to solve for it um, when we come back from break. Let's take the break now.